Namaste viewers and welcome to Bend It Like LD. Today's video is the most requested, the most demanded video from all my viewers and friends and um, this is a sequence of yoga for back pain and uh, I really apologize for the inordinate delay because of my erratic schedule and this was supposed to have been uh, shot a long time back but um, for various reasons I couldn't do that. So here it is, yoga for back pain, a sequence that can help release stiffness and a mild to moderate pain from the back and uh, a yoga sequence that can also effectively strengthen the back passively if practiced every day for uh, several months together. So let's get started. Sitting up in any comfortable posture first, allowing the breathing to settle down and slowly coming on to the knees. The first thing uh, to always remember with back pain is to take it easy and to back off if the pain is very severe. So you must remember that if your back pain is already severe or debilitating or stopping you from doing your regular activities, you probably need to see a therapist first to understand the underlying reason behind the back pain. And once you're in recovery mode, then you can practice the sequence every day. This is a restorative sequence, so it can be done every single day as soon as you wake up or possibly after you're back from work. So starting off with a complete child's pose by taking your knees mat distance apart, bringing your heels close to each other, big toes touching each other, slowly fold forward and working on pushing the hips back towards the heels and extending the spine forward. A simple sure shot way to gently release any stiffness from the back. Shashankasana with knees separated. And for this sequence you most certainly need some props to help you. Since it's a passive sequence it's good to have a nice thick bolster and two wooden blocks as well. In case you don't have them you could always use alternates like a thick cushion or like two books, thick books that you can use. So bring the bolster in between your thighs taking it all the way close to your groin or pelvic floor and simply lie down on the bolster with your arms hugging the bolster nicely. Therapeutic practices always require a lot of gentleness in the practice and one must always think of restoration and healing rather than intensity during these sequences. Moving on to a subtle cat and cow pose, bringing your knees hip distance apart, tucking your toes firmly into the mat, palms under your shoulders. A gentle cat and cow stretch is always a great way to release the stiffness from the back, extending the spine upwards and facilitating the upward and the um, downward movement of the spine so that if there's any tightness in the back or around the lower back or hips, this can help to address that. So as you inhale, Drop the back, lift the chest up, roll the shoulders back and as you exhale, tuck your chin to your chest, pull your navel in and round your back, trying to lift the spine up as much as you can. Keeping the thighs and the feet engaged throughout the practice, elbows are straight and pointing towards your feet, tucked in towards your feet. About five or six slow rounds of cat and cow pose, Marjariyasana and Bittilasana. These are also simply great practices to do even if you feel just about a little bit of stiffness in the body after your work or after a heavy gym workout. So these are some of the stretches that you can do after a sport as well. And from there moving on to a gentle twist Bharadwajasana. So coming on to your um, heels, sitting in Vajrasana if you're comfortable or if your knees are giving you trouble and if you find it difficult to sit on your heels, you can always take a position of Sukhasana or the easy sitting posture. So sitting on, if you're sitting in Vajrasana, taking your right palm behind your hip, left palm outside your right knee. Now since it's a restorative practice and it's aimed at people who are already having a back issue, it will be very beneficial to use a block to lift the spine up a little more so that you don't compress the lower back and place your palms on a block behind you. I'm going to show you the other way around so that you can actually see how beautifully it can help to elevate the hips and to raise the spine. So keep a block behind your hip, placing your left palm on the block. Take your right palm outside the left knee. Lift the chest up and twist and look over your left shoulder. 
a nice gentle twist and you can in fact use two blocks to raise your height a little further so that you don't stress your neck and shoulder and i can't stress enough on the importance of gentle twists in terms of back pain for sciatica for a pinched nerve or for a piriformis muscle or a tight it band twists are a great way to release tightness from your body so any sequence that targets these areas should always incorporate gentle twisting postures not very intense ones and also keep stretching your legs out sitting in seated dandasana take the block behind the right hip place your palms on the block taking your left palm outside the right knee lift the spine up and twist gently now this posture is for those who cannot sit in vajrasana or sukhasana if your knees are giving you trouble then this is the posture that you must use to uh, do a twist for your body you probably will see a lot of uh, relief immediately after doing just the first three asanas itself and from there we'll move on to a simple standing posture parshvakonasana many a times back pain can also be because of tight hip flexors or any tightness in your pelvic floor any tightness in your glutes so a gentle parshvakonasana we are not going to go very deep so taking your feet about 3 and a half to 4 feet apart make sure that the right heel is in line with your left arch drop your right elbow onto your right thigh and a gentle stretch by lifting your left arm over your left ear continue to look down towards your right toes if you can see i'm not going very deep in the posture because i just want to gently stretch out the muscles behind and to gently open the hips this is a great way to lengthen the sides of the body which could have possibly got tight over uh, several months or years and repeating the same on the left side tuck the tailbone pull the navel in make sure you're bending your left knee over the left ankle not taking your knee beyond the ankle dropping your left elbow on your left thigh right arm stretched over the right ear and gently look down keep pushing the outer edges of your right foot into the mat pulling up the right knee cap staying here for 5 deep inhalations and exhalations and restorative practices are always highly beneficial if you can hold them for longer durations so think more about holding postures for say 2 minutes 3 minutes 5 minutes which is why props are very essential because props can help you to hold asanas for a longer duration of time and you experience the benefits much better and from there we're going to do a very important pose a gentle malasana squat i'm going to use them i'm going to do this using blocks by taking your blocks hip distance apart place your heels on your blocks and turn the toes out to a 45 degree give a gentle push to the knees with your elbows lift the spine up and stay here for about 5 to 10 breaths for about or about a minute or so if you can a great way to release the hips the glutes any tightness any compression in the base of your spine and gently fold forward with your fingertips to the front trying to extend the spine a little you can even use two blocks if you feel you're still feeling a lot of tightness you can elevate the height of the blocks and place your heels on them i'm also going to use a bolster here and modify a malasana squat i'm placing a block on the bolster i'm going to sit on the block and turn my toes out again to a 45 degree this is a more passive approach to malasana and you can use this pose to hold it for a longer duration maybe 3 minutes and push the knees out with your elbows and lift the chest up a very essential pose for tightness in the back for any back pain for any soreness in your back i'm staying in every pose for about 5 or 10 breaths maximum because we don't have the luxury of time to shoot very long videos because then the uploading also takes a lot of time and from there moving on to easy bhujangasana or salamba bhujangasana as we call it and i'm going to use a bolster here the bolster helps in lifting the chest up and releasing stress on the chest because here we are working on passive 
passive back bend so take your feet hip distance apart press the tops of your feet into the mat drop your elbows down so that your elbows are directly under your shoulders palms are shoulder distance apart keeping your eyes closed try to stay here for about 2 or 3 minutes or as long as you can since this is a passive pose you will be able to hold for a longer time bhujangasana i'm sure everybody by now knows it's one of the best asanas for back string so this we are using more as a strengthening but strengthening it more passively if there is already back pain we don't want to do anything to aggravate the situation and always remember less intensity longer holds that's the key for therapy effort in the practice should be really gentle And once you're done, slowly drop your head down, relax for a few breaths. And from there, once again, sit back in child's pose. Pull the bolster all the way towards you. Lie down on the bolster, and allow the spine to come back, come back to its neutral position. we'll also do a um, a little deeper twist parivrata janu shirasana but i'm going to be using blocks here so that there is not too much tightness or there is not too much effort in the practice as i said if you're already having a mild to moderate back pain you don't want to intensify the posture so place two blocks under your left knee and take your left elbow down and hold the left foot from the inside Now press the right knee down lifting your right arm up gently twist towards your left side right arm over the right here again doing this passively so don't try to go deeper don't try to reach for the foot don't try to reach all the way down we want to hold this for a longer time and for those of you who find it difficult to grab your feet who feel your hamstrings are really super tight you can always use a belt around the middle of your left foot hold the belt gently without too much pressure lift your right arm up and fold towards your left side now you see this allows the spine to extend up and gently releases the compression from the base of your back your spine your middle back and it's a great way to release tightness from the back and helps a lot with your back pain and from there also doing a gentle revolve twist by placing your left palm on your right knee twist and look over your right shoulder just to counteract the twist and release repeating on the other side stretching the right leg out placing two blocks under the right knee you can always place one block under the knee two blocks under the knee i'm just showing you different options so you need to figure out where your body is at what stage your body is what is the level of pain that you have and accordingly take it as per your body's needs it's very important for you to understand at what level you are and accordingly take the practice to that level but the sequence is primarily designed for someone who's have who's been having a niggling back issue a niggling sort of discomfort at the base of your spine and this can help to address those but seeing a doctor is equally important visiting a physiotherapist is equally important so don't forget that and a gentle twist revolve twist as well by placing your right palm outside your left knee and twisting and looking over your left shoulder and release and slowly lie down on your back
hugging the right knee to your chest stretch the left leg out staying there for a few breaths all these postures may possibly look very underwhelming or unimportant but believe me these go a long way in treating your back so i'm going to teach you a very important way to work your lower back so interlock your fingers around both your knees now make sure your knees are kind of a little away from the chest and take a deep inhalation here fill your belly with air and expand your abdomen out and as you exhale draw the navel all the way to your spine and push the lower back into the mat it's a great way to help release from the lower back do that about 3 or 4 times and from there moving on to a gentle pose to release your hip flexors taking the right ankle over the left knee draw the left knee to your chest interlock your fingers around the left or uh, shins draw the left thigh towards your chest a gentle hip opener on the other side suchirandrasana A gentle pressure to bring the thighs close to your chest helps to release any tightness in the back of your thighs. And again a gentle twist bring the left knee to your chest first and slowly keep blocks on the right side so that you can rest the knee. Again as I said the idea is to be gentle and be restorative with the practice without much intensity so dropping the left knee onto blocks or you can even use a bolster under the knee allows for the spinal muscles to relax and yet extend gently spinal twists are so so important at the end of any practice even in your regular yoga practice even whether you're doing power yoga or hatha yoga or ashtanga it's always good to finish the practice with some spinal twist to restore the spine back to its position moving on to the other side hugging your right knee to your chest slowly drop the right knee to the left side place them on the bolster or on two blocks now make sure you're pressing the right shoulder on the mat a gentle twist all the way on the outer hip from the obliques and from there we'll move to a modified bridge pose using a block at a mid height not too high not too low so place the block lengthwise around your under your sacrum and the tailbone extending towards your lower back and to your glutes go ahead and make any adjustments to help you get comfortable because this is a pose that you would want to really stay for some time so make sure you adjust your clothes so that the block is not poking into your skin and if you're comfortable slowly extend the legs out hip distance apart try to press the shoulders down and allow your body to settle down in this posture and stay here for about 2 or 3 minutes if you can this is also good to strengthen your back slowly release the block and hug your knees to your chest and gently rock side to side front and back you might be feeling a deep sensation in your back once you come out of this posture but it will eventually settle down once you rock front and back and to the side and we'll finish with a simple legs up the wall pose but which i've modified using a bolster So keep the bolster under your lower back and hips under your glutes and simply lift your legs up. This is just to bring the blood back into your body to increase the flow of oxygen back to your cells. Helps to nourish and replenish blood supply across the entire body.
This is a great restorative pose. This can be used for people with perimenopausal symptoms, people for you know with anxiety, stress. It instantly ins it instantly brings down the stress levels in the body. And from there, slowly ease the bolster out of the hips and place the bolster under your knees, moving into a shavasana from there just letting go and this should feel heavenly for you at this time elevating the knees above the ankles is always also a good way to kind of keep the knees healthy And from there, moving on to our last restorative pose. Go ahead, scoop to the front of the mat, sit in Sukhasana first. Now walk the bolster all the way close to your butt, to your lower back. Press the bolster against your lower back and slowly drop your back and head onto the bolster. And slowly relax the legs. You can walk your heels a little away from the pelvic floor so that your knees are gently dropping towards the floor. Palms spread out and let go completely onto the bolster. This is a very important step and if possible try to stay in this pose for about 5 minutes if you can. You should feel fantastic after this. Slowly when you wish to come out, slowly bend your knees, roll over to your right side and slowly come up and sit up in any comfortable posture. Sitting up for a few breaths. And slowly rub your palms and transfer the warmth to your eyes, followed by your face and to the base of your neck and bring your palms in front of your face. And look into your palms first. Namaste. Thank you very much and hope your back feels good now. Thank you for watching.